This is part three of our epic 7,000 nautical mile voyage from Cape Town to Amsterdam on sailing yacht Pelagic Australis. In part one, Pelagic Australis got lifted for her survey and then handed over by skip to her new owners, Greenpeace. In part two, we set sail from Cape Town and headed 1,700 nautical miles north to one of the most remote islands in the South Atlantic, St. Helena. St. Helena Harbour Master, this is Sailing Yacht Pelagic Australis. Sailing Yacht Pelagic Australis, over. Unfortunately, this time our entry was denied. Do you want to give a quick update, Chris? Yep, so we stopped in St. Helena um, only to find out that it is now low that you have to be 14 days at sea. That counts. Caught it. <laughs> that counts as quarantine. If you haven't done your 14 days, um, then you have to sit at anchor and wait. And unfortunately, we don't have the time to do that. Um, also, you have to do another COVID test there, which the next available would have only been on Thursday in two days time. So unfortunately, it didn't work out this time and we'll have to come back. Yeah, it looks really cool from the outside. Yeah. And now we're on the way to Ascension Island, which yeah. is only 666 miles away now. Now, yeah. yeah. So we left um, St. Helena this afternoon. So, And we have got permission to land at Ascension Island yeah. because we applied for permits before uh, visas. So those were granted so we can land. We're really excited for that. None of us have been there before. Oh, looking yeah. forward to it. As we motored out of the anchorage in St. Helena, we suddenly had smoke coming from the engine alternator. So we stopped the engine and investigated. But the whole alternator is hot. Yeah. It's bloody hot. When we tighten the belts. Yeah. You can hear it. There's, it sounds different. Like the alternator sounds funny. It sounds like a pump. Like uh, first, I thought you switched on the fuel pump. Yeah, that's yeah right. I, I thought you went fuel pump. Okay. Yeah, so it was. Oh. It was up so that must be the alternator. It suddenly, maybe it's something with a pulley. No, but like it was smoke coming out of the alternator, not that the V belt. Well, I guess we have to put the other alternator there. Yeah. Luckily. We had plenty of wind and a generator to charge the batteries, so changing the alternators was postponed. planet site view tonight which is Venus that we're looking out for. Um, we did the calculations and um, Venus should be on a bearing of about 297 degrees so we've found that off to 300 which is roughly in that direction and at an altitude, calculated altitude of 12 degrees so it should be rising fairly soon. Also the time is at 3 minutes past 7 at 7 o'clock to keep a good look out for Venus. Yep. The old alternator. Yep, that's the old engine alternator that charges house batteries. Yeah, so that was smoking last week. That was the smoky one, yeah. Or the other day. <laughs> yeah. And Eric's the chief engineer on 
the Rainbow Warrior, yeah. Greenpeace. Well, now so, he's chief engineer on Pelagic Australis. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he's overqualified for Pelagic Australis. Well, you never know. We keep him definitely busy. <laughs> <laughs> Testing his skills on the board. Is it nice of you to have an assistant who's a chief instructor, uh, chief engineer? Well, I'm the assistant now. Yeah, it looks like you're the assistant now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, now we've taken the fenders off, um, the alternator off, and as usual, Pelagic has plenty of spares on board. Um, we do have a spare alternator on board. This one over here, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we ran into a little problem here because this pulley is good for the belts we have. Yeah. But the pulley, the new one, is uh, too small. This one is good, but we will damage it. But then we can uh, file it off again. Okay. Cool. Will be one. Yeah. So you've got the first pulley off? Yeah. This was on the mat, eh? Yeah. Are you going to try and put that pulley on the other one then, the new one? Yeah. Is that and the idea? Still, you have some tape. Okay. Yeah. Shiny new. Is this the used one though? It's, it's a service. used refurbished one. Uh, we're not sure actually. It, it looked like it's been used very shortly. Okay. See, these are the fan belts and they don't don't fit on on this pulley. Yeah. Um, so, so maybe they tried it. Then the belts were slipping because also here's a mark of this tightening uh, screw. Yeah. yeah. And and there was marks on here that they. It looks like somebody tried to take them off. I don't know how tight it is now. It's very coming off straight away. Yes. <laughs> Did it? Yeah, it was super easy. The other one was probably stuck because it was on there for like three years. But this one was actually really easy. <laughs> anyway, if we wouldn't have prepared it, it would have been stuck. Hard, yeah. Work. Now I just smeared on. some oil over me so I look like I've done something. Okay, yeah. but alter or the refurbished alternator is back in its place. Fan yeah. belts are on. Yeah, we're just doing some final adjusting here. Cool. And then all the electrical cable go back on. And then we have to cross fingers and hope yeah, that it doesn't go up in flames. <laughs> Now your video. Hey. <laughs> you can test it. Alternator all. Not, uh, put that on camera. Eh? The testing. The testing. <laughs> we just tell everyone it worked. <laughs> okay. Okay. Engine's on. Oh. Have a look. into neutral and and revs let's have a look if the batteries are charging I don't hear any screaming yet
don't know. We'll find out. Is there a smoke? Is there? I don't know. Same thing. Same thing. Okay. Smoke. smoke bag. So, problem with the alternator persists. Yes. <laughs> and the new alternator is smoking as well. So next step is. Yeah, the, the charge regulator. Yep. See, that makes a difference. Boom. Luckily, we've got all the spares on board. That's why we're 60 tons carrying an extra boat inside the lockers. While Eric swapped the charge regulator, I made sure the crew wouldn't go hungry at lunchtime. Skipper Chris, you're on cooking duty, are you? Yep. Yeah. Making um, salad. Oh, God, we need salad. Yes. That looks so good. Are you going to mix it all together? Mm -hmm. Hey, so lunch is ready. Oh, glorious. Thank you. Here. We love working on smaller boats as the work is very versatile. One moment you are preparing dinner in the galley and the next you're on the helm, surfing big waves or running the deck hoisting sails. How's the helm? A bit better with the Genoa unfurled completely? Yeah, we've just got some. We've got the full Genoa out, full Yankee. Seconds. But the wind kept dropping and it was time to hoist the mainsail too. Oh, all set ties off. When we left St Helena we had a strong breeze from astern, so we decided to keep the mainsail down and to sail goose swinging with the two foresails. This way the mainsail didn't blanket the Genoa or Yankee. Yeah, take that off now. Without the mainsail up, the boom would swing ever so slightly from side to side. To stop this, we put a handy billy onto the end of the boom to pull it taut over to one side. To hoist the mainsail, we now had to release the handy billy. Hey Eric, so what are you doing? I'm uh, preparing late uh... That's good. Reef in. And so Pelagic Australis sailed into the night with a reefed mainsail and the two Yankees pulled out either side. However, the wind veered throughout the night. So we had to furl the Yankee, drop the pole, shake all the reefs out of the mainsail and continue on a broad reach. So this morning Eric and I discovered um, that we have some shape on the Genoa sheet right at the clue. Unfortunately the clue um, on the Yankee sails is about 6-7 meters off the deck. So um, we'll have to go up in a halyard, untie it, cut it off, put new shape protection on, then go up again and re-tie it. So that's the plan now. Yep, so we've got um, the halyard through a snatch block, Dim is repairing it there. And then from the snatch block it goes on to the big primary with a coffee grinder because um, I feel a bit lazy, so the guys have to grind me up. We both really enjoy deck work, so that one doesn't miss out, we share the jobs between us. Here, Chris took down the Genoa sheets, whilst I took down the Yankee sheets. This one's going to go round the um, sail, so the furling uh, sail, and then that comes back onto myself, and that will secure me to um, the horse stay. So I don't swing about too wildly. All sorted, halyard on. Halyard tied on with a bowline and clipped on. Yeah. Double safety.
Okay, hold. Hold. And he completes slack on the port sheet. Can you pull that through? The port sheet. No, no. But I, it's wrapped around. You have to grab the bottom part there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Thanks. Okay, you should be able to get that. Um, Coming down, coming down. Where's the cheat? Oh, I can see that is pretty badly whew, all the way down to the core. Core is still in intact, but the shave protection and the cover is completely through. Once the sheets were down, we cut off the old chafe protection that had worn through, milked the line and stitched and whipped the new chafe protection back on. So what we'll do is take the cover off. I think that's done its duty. And then chop off. Everybody has sharpened those knives. Mm. Perfect. Thank you very much. We're now going up and putting the uh, jib sheets or the yank sheets back on that have been repaired. Oh, right, so I've got my two sheets, uh, the yank sheets. Um, the halyard and then the stock go around the, um, the yank itself. So we're getting up our sun awning, yeah, in tropical yeah, it's, waters. It's about 40 degrees almost, hardly any wind, so we're getting hot. Yep. So we need some uh, awning or canopy to cool ourselves and see if we can fix it. Cool, so we're going to go forward, see if we can find it in the full peak. So we'll organize full peak and Obviously, the opening isn't here because I cleverly put it here. There it is. Yeah, so that's a sun awning that has been under Skip's house or Eleanor's house for apparently about 10-15 years. Um, never been used in the high latitudes. Um, considering that, she's in remarkably good shape. Um, top quality. <laughs> Even Eric is happy. Yeah, and that doesn't happen very often, eh? And it is recorded. I'm not Thank a happy you for sharing. Sure. <laughs> 
Yeah, with this statement, we will stop smile. the movie. <laughs> Are you happy with the result? Satisfied. I mean, Satisfied. Great. Yeah, as a German, we don't get happy. Germans don't get happy. Yeah, and never gets happy. <laughs> All right. Sat satisfied, but two unhappy content, people on the content. boat. Content. And you're stuck with them. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and I'm peeing my trousers of happiness, so uh, that'll make up for these two. Uh, <laughs> okay, Ascension Island in the distance. Yay! Our Hi. second attempt to land on the island. Ascension is 50 miles away. We can see it retreating out of the ocean there. Uh, we should be there by the morning. Um, yeah, you can already hear them on the radio. It's really cool. So I'm really excited because I um, uh, plotted uh, my first planet site, which uh, this evening was a site taken from Venus, um, and I put it on the plotting sheet. I've done a running fix. Um, from it uh, using my afternoon sun site and uh, the reason I'm also very excited is that uh, my position from my morning sun site to my afternoon sun site see, uh, today uh, gave me a position about half a mile from my GPS position. It was so close that um, I really couldn't see a difference between uh, using the dividers. It's taken me uh, you know, a long time, I've really dedicated to this. Chris, I know you've just come and watched, but can I show you something? Mm -hmm. Can you guess what it is? Star yeah. sites? No, not quite star sites. Mm -hmm. But you're along the, the right lines. Sun sites? No, I've been doing the sun sites for a year, so I've moved on from that. Planets? Planets, yeah. So I took my um, first planet site last night and um, it was Venus. Mm -hmm. And I plotted it. How do you go? Yeah, so I got within two nautical miles working out my um, running fix. Um, so if I can show you, would you like to see? Yeah, show sure. me. Cool. So this was my first one, which is my running fix from um, my morning sun site to my afternoon sun site. Yeah. And then um, this one here, you can see the word Venus. Yeah. That's my um, afternoon sun site and running fix to my. Venus. Pretty much spot on. So, yeah, so there's my dead reckoning next to it. Yeah. You can see how close that is? Yeah, very good. And this one, it's actually on it. Brilliant. So, I reckon that's less than 500 pieces. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm really pleased. Yeah, very good. I really enjoy taking them on the planet sites. It's nice. Because it's like kind of cool wait, waiting for twilight and working out the twilight civil time. So, yeah. Yeah, cool. The next one is Mars. Uh, Mars, I want to get. Jupiter? Jupiter and Saturn. Yeah. I tried nice. Saturn the other night, but it didn't work too well, so I've got to work on that one again. Cool. Yeah, yeah. And because what, what's really cool about it is you work it out, you've got the bearing and you've got the calculated altitude, and then you're waiting for it to appear as it gets dark, and then suddenly it appears, and it's like, have I got it right? It's bang on target. Well, Venus was. That's very cool. Yeah. Your turn next. Yep. Good morning, Sophie. Have a look. Yeah. Right next to it. Wow, oh, it's outside. Oh, wow, Ascension in all her glory. Mm. It's beautiful, eh? Oh, yeah. It would look better with a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> of course, in the British world, everything is better with a cup of tea. Oh, well, we are in the UK now again. True. Let's hope we can get ashore here. Yep, yeah, well at least we have our visa sorted this time. Yeah. And we have two weeks at sea, so that should count as our quarantine. Yep. Yeah. And so. also we were told about the Galapagos uh, sharks around here. Yep. Yeah. Maybe we can get some shark spotting. And some turtles. Join us next as we land on Ascension Island, where we encounter some huge Galapagos sharks that show some keen interest in our propeller. We also explore Darwin's tropical rainforest at the top of the volcano and spend a night on the beach filming little sea turtles hatch and make their run for the sea. Getting back to Pelagic Australis at the end of the day proved to be quite an adventure too. 
If you enjoyed this film, please do like and subscribe to our channel. We would really appreciate it. If you would like to support our work, you can do so via the Super Thanks button with a one-off donation or check out our Patreon page for early access and extra content. We would love it if you would like to follow our Season Summit social media accounts as well as our personal wildlife photography accounts on Instagram. For this, check out the links in the video description